and the truncated pyramid is a symbol found throughout the world. Like in Hebrew, it is known as the Tel. Like the horny pyramid of Mount Sinai, the Moon Mountain, which you see pierces the clouds and goes up into the air where God is. You see, this is why the letter Aleph, or A, begins the word air, the symbol of the element of air. And the symbol for air represents the ancient gods like Zeus, or An, the Anu bull god, or let's say Enlil, the ancient bull god of Sumeria. So as I stated before, we know that the Aleph, or the A, of the Hebrew alphabet goes back to the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, which is the symbol of the crown, or the symbol of the ox head, the symbol of the bull with horns. Which is why El, the bull god, is the most high. He is the symbol of the truncated A, or the Aleph, which is aloft and floating in the air, which is the penis of the bull, the penis of the truncated pyramid. The golden crown of Cronus or Saturn L, the bull god of the Bible. So we see that the Aleph and the Lamed are the representations of the fertility of the bull god L of the Bible. So we see this is exactly why the Illuminati or the Elites, the bull worshippers of L, worship the phallic pyramid, which is the symbol of fire and air, which is why they have the golden-tipped pyramid. And we see that Bush holds the golden-tipped pyramid. And Bush actually wanted to crown the golden-tipped pyramid in 2000. And let's not forget that the Egyptian god of the air or the sky, the heavens, was known as the goddess Nut. And of course, the celestial goddess of the sky or the heavens was the goddess of the cow or the bull, which is why we have the Milky Way galaxy. And the bull god Osiris would ascend the ladder of Nut to heaven, exactly like the story of the Bible of Jacob's ladder ascending to heaven. And we find in the ancient Rosetta Stone that the word Egypt was used by the hieroglyphic of black three times, and the black represented the bull. And to this very day, worshippers of the Bible say Amen, which comes from Amun, or Amen, Amen, Amun, Ra Min. And the Aleph, or the A, gives us our pyramid of power known as the tribal. And the ancient nomadic tribes of the old world still to this very day worship the cattle of the cow and the bull. And here we have an ancient Jewish tribal priest and notice his crown of the bull horns or the horns of the moon. Which brings me to the bull-worshipping ancient Israelites of the tribes of Israel, which was known as the Twelve Tribes of Israel. Israel and the Twelve Tribes, which is actually the Twelve Houses of the Zodiac. Which is why we hear about the rams and the goats and the bulls and the lions, because these are all animals of the zodiac wheel. So let me explain to you the truth behind the 12 tribes of Israel and the 10 lost tribes of Israel, the ancient kingdom of Israel. You see, the truth is the number 12 does not exist actually. There are only numbers 0 through 9 which makes up 10. You see, this is exactly why our month of December at the end, the 12th month, is actually the 10th month. This is why des means 10, and 10 comes from te, which also means 10. You see, this is why when the sun begins to decline and 
die its death to the underworld in winter time, which is known as the ember months, when the sun is dying in the underworld and is in an ember form, not in a flame form of the sun when it's powerful. So the ember months begin in September. So September is the ninth month, but is actually the seventh month. And October means the eighth month, not the tenth month. And November, which is the ninth month, is known to us as the eleventh month. You see, December is the tenth month, not the twelfth month, because the DEC means ten, not twelve. You see, this is why the symbol of God is known as the Tetragrammaton, which is the symbol of the Triangle of El, the Triangle, the Fertility Pyramid of the Sacred God, which is known as Yahweh. And Yah, or Yahuwah, is the God of the Bible, Y-H-W-H, the Sacred Tetragrammaton, or the Sacred Triangle. And when we look at the alphabet of the ancient Paleo-Hebrew, we see that the tenth letter is known as the Yod, and the first is, of course, the Aleph, which is the other one. So the one and the ten is the same thing, and that's why the Yod is the symbol of the God in the Bible, Adonai, the two Yods. And the Yod is the only letter of the Hebrew alphabet that floats in the air, exactly like Yoda. And of course, Yoda lives to be 900 years old, because at a thousand or ten, he will be reborn into the One. So the Hebrew Yod is the Most High, the form of the Aleph or the Bull God El in the form of the Yod. And this is why the very word Aleph in itself holds the sacred A and the L. You see, the Aleph, which is a three-letter word, is actually made up of three, the Trinity. Because the Aleph is actually made up of the Trinity of the three Yods. Three Yods are put together that make the symbol of the Aleph bowl. And remember I told you that the Lamed has a value of 30, which is exactly why the Aleph also has the value of 30. And the Aleph, or the A, is the Triang of El, the symbol of the Fire Pyramid of the Triangle. Which is exactly why El, the Bull God of the Bible, appears as fire. And the red hot fire bull god El has his arch enemy, the complete polar opposite of Baal, which is Satan, Saturn, the god of fire in hell. And of course, this is exactly why Saturn El, which is known as Santa, Father God El, appears and comes from the burning flames of fire. You see, this is exactly like the red hot fire flame of the torch, or the toro, the fighting bull, which is exactly why we have the red hot fire torch of the Torah. And let's not forget that God appeared on the mountain of fire, which is the meaning of mountain, the symbol of the pyramid, or the A, Mount Sinai is where God, the God of fire, inscribed the tablets with fire. And of course the Ten Commandments, once again, is talking about the Ten or the Tetra. Thou shalt not covet anything that is thy neighbor. And believe it or not, most people are not aware that the sacred Hebrew texts are said to have come from the sacred element of fire, or the sacred flame. 
And most people are not aware also that the entire Hebrew alphabet, all of the letters, actually all come from the sacred Yod. And the Yod is the symbol of the flame or the fire, which is why the symbol of the Yod looks exactly like the flame. And you'll notice that the fire symbol uses the triangavel, the symbol of fire and of air, because the fire needs the oxygen in order to burn. And of course, you'll notice that fires burn in a triangular shape. And the triangle of L, which is the symbol of fire and the flame, is behind the sacred Yod and the Aleph, which makes up the entire Hebrew alphabet. And just so that you understand, the pyramid, the etymology of the very word, lets us know what it means, which is the pyramid, as in the pyre or the fire. That's why we have a pyro, one who is obsessed with fire. And yes, this is exactly why Egypt has what's known as the Most High Pharaoh, which is the fire, exactly like phosphorus, which is the light or the electricity that is caused by the Lucifer or the light, the lux. And the lux or the light is exactly why we have the temple of Luxor. And if you've been to Vegas, now you'll understand why the beam of light is shooting up from the lux of the pyramid of fire. I mean, why do you think we have what's called a tempel mount? Because the very word temp is the temp fire of L or the temperature. And all of the ancient gods have always been associated with the air or the sky, which is why the mountains reach up into the sky where the gods dwell, which is exactly why the very symbol or the triangle is the symbol of the mountain. And the mountain means the mountain of fire or the pyramid of fire. So now you can see the obsession that the elite or the Illuminati have with the sacred fire or the pyre. And this is why they make sacrifices to the god of fire. And a cremation is the burning of the soul and the bones to ashes, which is a burnt offering, a holocaust. And so now you'll understand the burnt offering of the World Trade Center a little better and why they shot the beams of light or the lux of Lucifer into the air because they're obsessed with towers, exactly like the Tower of Babel. And don't forget that a building is named after the bold house of the bull, which is exactly why you'll find buildings on a boulevard. So we see why the Illuminati worships the pyramid scheme or the pyramid structure of power from the very tip of the Elites to the very bottom of the sheeple. And in the Bible, we find that Yahweh is speaking to Moses or El Musa and is requesting that, or should I say commanding, the children of Israel to make sacrificial burnt offerings to God, which is, of course, he, as he describes, is a sweet savor unto God. And it continues with Yahweh commanding the sacrifice or burnt offering of two young bulls, exactly like the ancient Druidic order. They would sacrifice two bulls. And notice that the burnt offering or the sacrifice must take place on a new moon. And the new moon is what I call a black moon or the black moon of death because the death of the moon is at the zero or no light at all versus the 100% light of a full moon. 
You see, because the truth is that a new moon is the virgin moon or the new sliver or slice that becomes visible. So we know that the buildings or the buildings of the twin towers are the male and the female towers which were worshipped in ancient Cana Phoenicia or the bull god El and his consort Asherah, the pair of Els or the parallel, which is the double, which is the paradox of opposition and attraction, the male and the female, positive and negative. And in the Bible, this is why we have the parables of Jesus or the pair of Els, the parables. And yes, the para does mean two or the pair, which is just like a coupe, which is a two-door car, which is made for a couple or a coupe of L, the two L's, which is why the Bible or the two bulls has the story of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And the very etymology of the word testament reveals the numerical value of ten. Like the ten commandments, which are made up of the two pillars or the two tablets. And here is some more important facts from the rabbi talking about the sacred yod and the numerical value of ten. So ten is ten times one. In other words, the oneness of God is manifest in plurality through the letter 10. Thus, the number 10 of all of the numbers is one of the most important. And there are countless different ideas in our tradition that have 10 in them. On the level of worlds, we have the ten expressions through which God brings the world into being. We're told in the, in, in also in our tradition that there were ten things created on the first day. There were ten things created at dusk of the sixth day. On the level of souls, we see that Abraham, the first Jew, had ten tests all of which he passed. And through that he merited, as it says in the Torah, to inherit a land of ten nations. Number ten is the day of Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is called the holiest day of the year, and it comes out in the tenth day of the month of Tishrei we give a tenth of our income to charity and when we take our crops from the field we also give a tenth in, in the ancient time before we could enjoy it. This is what's called tithing. On the level of divinity we have the ten svirot the archetypal emanations through which creation comes into being. 